All right, so in this video, I'm going to continue my discussion of the user interface of Cubase. So this is going to be going over some more of the basics that you need to know, what you're looking at with this whole interface, and in my opinion, what are some of the most important things. So we will get a little bit more into the mixer and the channel settings and a few other tips and tricks as we go along. So first off, let's look at the mixer. And again, I could press F3 to pop up the mixer. One thing to know about the mixer, of course, is that you can zoom in and out of the mixer. So G and H are the key commands for zooming. And I can also make the faders longer by making this whole window bigger. So you could get a really huge mixer if you want to. I prefer to keep my mixer fairly standard, but there's all sorts of things you can do. And then the other thing you have in the mixer is if you want to get really carried away, you could view all sorts of things like sends for each channel. If you've got send effects on, you can view a, something called channel strip, which is kind of a neat one as well. It's, it's a little bit more like an old school mixer. So with this strip here, you can see an EQ, you can see a compressor, and you can see something called a gate. I don't need to have this old school feeling of a real EQ with the knobs and stuff, so I rarely ever use the strip. Here we have the EQ overview also, and again, I just open up the channel settings pretty much every time I'm working in Cubase, and then we've got inserts at the top. Inserts aren't a bad one. Do you know what's neat about this is if you have some effects on a few tracks, and you want to just copy some effects, I can hold Option and drag this effect over to this other one and it will bring Guitar Rig and everything with it over to this other channel. So that's a really nice way to copy certain things in the mixer window. And then the other thing you can do with tracks in the mixer is you can click on one track and you can go Command C or Copy and then you can click on another track and go Command V and it will copy all of the settings, including the EQ, the effects that you have, the send effects that you have, a really quick way to copy and paste between your different tracks. I am going to undo that. And that, by the way, is this little undo redo button, which was a new feature that came out on a recent version of Cubase. And look at that. The fader jumps back to where it was before. And some other users of other programs might not find that as exciting as us Cubase users, but that was something we've been asking for for a very long time. And so that's just this little undo button right here. If you do something in the mixer that you don't want, whether it's just you know panning or whatever, just click that little button, it'll undo it. And then at the very top, you've got routing, which is a very important setting as well. I like to do most of the routing stuff that I do over here in the inspector. So if you look at an audio track, again, that's where we have the inputs and the outputs, as we mentioned in the last video. So that's kind of the top stuff in the mixer. You can also do things in the Cubase mixer, like you can set snapshot. So let's save this whole thing right here as a snapshot. I'm gonna click the little snapshot button, and then now we have snapshot one. Then I'm gonna change some faders, move some stuff up and down maybe change some panning, maybe copy guitar rig over to this channel. And then I'm gonna go save that snapshot. So we have another snapshot saved. Now, if I go back to recall snapshot one, the faders go back to where they were and guitar rig gets taken off of this track. So it's a really neat way to try completely different effects, completely different mixes. So I'm gonna go back to snapshot one because that's where I started from but really beautiful feature in the Cubase mixer there and a great way to go, okay, you know what? I'm gonna try a mix that's totally different. So we can also go in here and click this little magnifying glass to find or to get to a channel really quickly. So a little magnifying glass, if you have a ton of tracks, I was reading an article on BT, one of my favorite electronic producers, and he's talking about how he works in Cubase as well and he's got some projects that have thousands of tracks in them. Talk about a track managing nightmare, unless you have features like this. So brilliant little feature to get to all of your tracks really quickly. One thing you can do is have a bunch of tracks selected. And by the way, to select multiple tracks, you just hold shift on connected ones and command on ones that aren't connected. So now all of these are selected. You see them turn kind of gray. And then we can go up here and we can go show only selected channels and it's going to get rid of all of the other channels. Now it's good, not gotten rid of them, but it's just hidden them. To get them back, all we have to do is click here and go show all 
channels and everything pops up. Now, what about if you have tracks in your project that don't have anything on them? So I go back to my mixer and I've got these three audio tracks that have nothing on them. So what I can also do is click right here and go show channels for tracks with data. And it gets rid of the tracks that don't have anything on them. Again, someone like BT, you've got a huge template, you've ended up with a project that's fairly large, and you want to hide all those tracks that you're not using, just do that. Brilliant little feature. The other thing you can do is click this little button and go, you know what, I don't want to see effects channels. So just hide the effects channels right there. I don't want to see audio channels. Hide all the audio channels right there. So different ways of viewing the tracks that are in your project. And another thing you can do is to go way over to the right hand side here and click on this little button and that opens up kind of like an inspector for the mixer. So over here in the mixer we can see these little check marks that show which tracks are visible. Kind of like the visibility on this first page where we're hiding stuff that's on the actual arranger here. But if I go over here and start turning these off, those tracks now just disappear. And watch what happens if I go back to this little menu item right here and go show channels for tracks with data. It hides the ones that have nothing on it and it just turns the check marks off. So you can go and individually manage those later if you say, yeah, I just want to turn on audio track two. Well, now you've turned it on and then you can start mixing that stuff as well. Uh, we've got a history right here so we can see a detailed history of the stuff that we're doing in our mixer. And then we've also got the snapshots which I've been taking right here in this little snapshots menu. So some beautiful stuff to manage right there. We've got an M in the top here that says deactivate all mute states. So if I add a bunch of tracks muted and I click this, it will unmute all of those tracks all at once. And then the same thing goes for solos. Sometimes you find yourself soloing a bunch of different tracks and it's kind of a pain to have to go and individually unsolo all of them. Just click that button and that will get rid of all of those solos. And again, if your mixer doesn't look quite like this, you can right click up in the mixer and then you can turn on and off things like the state buttons. We've also got automation in here as well. And then we've got this link setting, which is quite a nice little feature. Let's say you're working on your project and you're running out of headroom on the master output. So everything has just gotten too loud. Really quick way for you to bring up the level of everything down at once is just to select all of the tracks and then go up to where it says link. And we're going to click on the link button and we're going to link all of these different things. So I'm going to link just the volume. So I click OK. Now I can bring everything down all at once but, and therefore give me some more headroom on the master output. So that's a way you could turn everything down. Now imagine you're recording an audio track and your singer's having a hard time hearing because all of the music is too loud, all of the music tracks. Well, you don't want to go in and individually turn them down because you're going to lose the state of your mixer and the state of your mix. And so what you'd want to do is keep all of those relative adjustments exactly where they are but bring everything down all by the same fader. And then I can just turn off the link right there and now I can just move one fader by itself without hitting all of the other faders at the same time. But you saw on there that I have a way to link other things and this is kind of exciting. So if I select these three audio tracks and I want to change something like the routing for all of these or add insert effects to all of these, I can go to my link settings, click on that little button right there and let's just do, um, let's do routing. We'll go to pan and then I'll go to EQ and then I'm going to go to insert effects. So watch what happens now if I go to the routing tab and I say, okay, let's all, let's go to the right input. Well, now I can change all of my tracks to the appropriate input. So if you have 10 different tracks and you want them all to record from the same input, on your audio interface. Now you can change them all in one spot right there. And I also want to put a compressor on all of them. Well, there you go. I just put a compressor on all of them. And then let's say you also want to put some EQ on them. So then you hit the E button, opens up the channel settings, and then here I can just do some kind of crazy EQ and that will be on all three of my tracks because they are all linked. Once I'm done, I can turn the link off and then now I can go and make changes without affecting the other tracks as well. So a really important button, that link button right there.
make sure you check that one out. So that's probably good enough for the mixer. Now let's go look at this channel settings button for each track and that's this E button right here on the mixer and if I go over to my main page you're going to see the E button also right here. So if I go back to my mixer press the E button for this track and there I can see the settings for my EQ. So I have other videos on equalization and stuff like that so you can go check those ones out after but this is where we can make EQ changes. So we can boost high frequencies, we can cut high frequencies or, or reduce high frequencies, boost the middle frequencies, boost or reduce the low frequencies. You can also go in and turn on things like a, like a shelving EQ right here and this shelving EQ reduces low frequencies at a certain point or it boosts them wherever you are on this line. So that's the EQ window and then we've also got the channel strip right here where you can turn on things like a compressor just for this track, a very simple compressor with some of the simple controls and those are going to show up in the channel strip. So if I, if I do some changes to this right here and then I go over to my channel strip right here, you'll see that the compressor is now on that track. So the strip shows up in the upper part of the mixer and then it also shows up in this part of the channel settings window. So over on the left hand side we've got insert effects. So there we can put on any kind of effect that's specific to just this one track, whether that's an audio track or a virtual instrument track. And then over here on the right hand side we've got our send effects and that's where we can choose things like our reverb. And if you hold option and double click on this level control right here, you are going to pop up that actual send effect. So that's a really quick way for you to get to your reverb or whatever it is, your delay settings or whatever it is, and then you can go make your changes and then adjust how much of that reverb is on right there. So I think that probably gives you enough of an overview of the mixer and the channel settings windows. Hopefully you learned a few tips and tricks in this video and make sure you stay tuned for more and I'll see you in the next video.